I would argue that my love and study in this aquatic organism has told me quite a bit about this aquatic organism, that the things that we're studying in frogs are relevant to the things we're studying in humans. Some might question that, but I would argue that my tadpole trapped in a contaminated aquarium, trapped in a contaminated pond, is no different than this organism trapped in a contaminated amniotic fluid dependent on the same hormones as my frog. And studies now show that we're exposed to over 300 chemicals before we leave the womb, most of which we have no idea what they do. And I was told when I got involved in this, don't be an advocate, Tyrone. Let the science speak for itself, my PhD advisor said. And, and for many of us, scientists in the ivory tower. That's, we take that attitude because, that, because that's how, we ta how we're taught. And so when I thought about this idea of letting the science speak for itself, when in fact all of my science was being spoken in PNAS, in nature, in places that don't have access to the public, then I knew that I had a completely different responsibility. One, as an academic scientist, but two, to make sure that, that information is available wherever it's needed and whoever would tolerate me for 30, 40 minutes to talk about. 